Straight ahead on 12 News, a plan for a prime piece of real estate. See what's going up next to New Hope's Village Golf Course. Plus, are they really urban dwellers, where a home building expert says millennials prefer to live? But first, a series of trailer thefts and why Minnesota law makes them more difficult to track. 12 News starts right now. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. A word of warning for people who own trailers. Police say small trailers have become an increasingly popular target for criminals. In New Hope alone, thieves have stolen three trailers in the past 90 days. And due to the, li the license requirements for small trailers, there's not much police can do to find them. We want every scout to be able to participate in scouting regardless of income or status. The Boy Scouts in New Hope Troop 751 take part in a variety of activities, from camping to archery to community service. This is their livelihood. This is what they do. But sometime between June 15th and June 22nd, uh, where we stored the trailer was in the back corner. Scoutmaster Chad Weinhold says someone made their way to the St. Joseph Parish parking lot and stole a small trailer that held their camping and cooking supplies. Tents and stoves and lanterns and first aid kits all the tools that a scout would need to be able to do what they needed for a weekend camp. The scouts lost $4,500 worth of supplies along with their $2,000 trailer. It, it's a pretty big blow to our troop. Somebody removed the lock from the tongue of the trailer and towed it away. New Hope police say the trailer is one of three taken by thieves in the past few months. Mostly the enclosed trailers under 3,000 pounds. Uh, this has been part of a larger metro-wide trend. Police say it's unclear exactly why thieves are targeting trailers, and unfortunately for the victims, Minnesota's license plate laws for trailers under 3,000 pounds make them hard to track. The state removed the requirement that trailers have a license plate on them. They are now given a permanent sticker which goes on the tongue of the trailer. That makes it very difficult to run the plates and find out, find the stolen ones. Which means they might never find the scouts trailer. To me, it's the low of the low. To, to steal from a group of Boy Scouts. A group of Boy Scouts who will have to tweak their summertime plans because of a crime of opportunity. Ditch the trailer, make it noticeable, turn it in, get it back to us because this is the crux of our program. Well, there is some good news to report. Since the scout's trailer was stolen, donors and other scout troops have stepped forward and helped Troop 751 replace about a third of what was stolen. If you'd like to help the scouts, we have more information on how to do that on our website, 12.tv. A Minneapolis woman has died after a car crash Monday in Golden Valley. Police in New Hope had pulled over the car for erratic driving. When two people got out of the car, police say two others took off at a high rate of speed. Police found the car here at the intersection of Winnetka and Highway 55 in Golden Valley where it had crashed into a pole. The driver, 19-year-old Alana Magnuson of Minneapolis, died of her injuries Wednesday. The passenger is listed in serious condition. A state patrol is investigating, but it turns out the car had been involved in a theft at a New Hope business before the traffic stop. It was a scary day for some teenagers in New Hope. Their Toyota Camry flipped upside down between two trees in a McDonald's parking lot near 42nd and Winnetka. Fortunately, the teens walked away. There's three people in there. They were wearing their seatbelts, and uh, they're all okay. Nobody got injured on this one. So seatbelts made the difference. Yeah, I would say seatbelts definitely probably saved their lives. So I recommend everybody wear your seatbelts. The car had been traveling south on Winnetka Avenue before turning into the McDonald's. Brooklyn Park's search for a new city manager is now down to three. Here are the finalists. Ann Norris, the city manager for the past 15 years in Crystal. Michael Redlinger, the city manager in Moorhead. And Jay Strobel, the deputy city coordinator in Minneapolis. The three were chosen from a large pool of candidates. The public is invited to meet the finalists at an open house Tuesday night at the Community Activity Center. The housing market continues to dig out of the deep rut caused by the Great Recession a few years ago. Single-family home construction is expected to increase between now and 2017. And according to Robert Dietz of the National Association of Home Builders, more millennials are buying houses. He says despite the popularity of central city living, 90% of millennials still prefer the burbs. We think the millennials will do the same thing that prior generations have. They may do it a little bit later. We've called that the great delay. 
it's part of the fallout from the Great Recession, getting jobs later, income growth has been a bit delayed, but the goal remains the same, uh, marriage, kids, the home of the, the suburbs. Dietz was speaking today at the Golden Valley Country Club. He expects new home construction to return to near normal levels by 2017. Well, the city of New Hope now has a plan for a development site along Bass Lake Road next to New Hope Village Golf Course. The New Hope City Council has approved an agreement with Aladdis Real Estate to build 150 to 180 luxury apartments and 10 to 16 townhomes. This kind of development would be unique to the city. What really stood out was a product that, that isn't currently available in New Hope and something of very high quality with a, a very uh, experienced and reputable development team. It just uh, seemed like it made a lot of sense. The site was previously home to five multifamily apartment buildings that were crumbling and eventually razed. The city eliminated proposals to build either single-family homes, senior housing, or a sports dome at the site. Well, Maple Grove has a new place to drop off prescription drugs that are out of date or just no longer needed. A drop box has been installed in the entryway to the Maple Grove Police Station. Police say it's better to dispose of the old medications there rather than keep them in a cupboard at home. Partnership for Change at North Memorial Hospital and the Maple Grove Lions Club helped make the new drop-off site possible. It's a good way of uh, disposing of any needles or uh, uh, pills or anything rather than you know flushing them down the toilet or, or one way or another garbage or whatever. We have uh, prescription drug abuse we have it throughout um, the country as I said but we also have experienced it here in Minnesota and we've had some tragedies here and what I'm trying to do is make it more accessible for Maple Grove residents. It's visible Maple Grove Police also have a new set of wheels thanks to a donation from the Lions Club. The Bike Patrol has been around for years, but some of their bikes have worn out. Now six new police bikes are in service. The bikes are really mobile. We're able to get a lot of places squad cars can't get or faster just simply because uh, we can cut through areas where uh, cars can't. So we uh, use the bikes throughout the entire summer and fall. We have officers assigned at during daytime or nighttime hours. The Lions donated $20,000 for the bikes and some additional gear. You'll find officers on bike patrol in retail areas like the shops at Arbor Lakes, along trails and parks, and at the Maple Grove Parade, which is tonight. Well, coming up, some not-so-common herbs that can enliven your senses and add to your cooking. Then later in sports, a young Maple Grove golfer is living out a dream this week at the U.S. Women's Open. But first, dew points on the rise. Friday starts to feel a lot more hot and humid. Well, be sure, be sure to bring your appetite to Whizbang Days. The annual Robbinsdale Festival began today. One spot worth checking out is the Bistro on Broadway, run by the Robbinsdale Lions Club. For some, Whizbang Days is the pinnacle event of the summer. It is different, and it is our celebration, and everybody looks forward to it. And I think a lot of people plan accordingly. Um, make sure that they've got some vacation time, low vacation days, or maybe an early out, an early in, but a chance to come home and and be with community members and their family. Whiz Bang Days wraps up Sunday night with fireworks. Well, since ancient times, herbs have been used to spice up foods and used for medicines. Today, Sonia Goins goes in the garden to show us some not so common herbs. Lavender, mustard, uh, parsley, dill. Common culinary herbs can add flavor to soups and other foods. The stevia is a natural herb that you can use for your teas. The stevia plant is super sweet. So if you want something to, to uh, crave your sweet tooth, you could just chew it. But Donna Italian with Lime Greenhouse says there are some not so common perennials that grow well in Minnesota and also add to your food and your medicine cabinet. This one is Valorin, and this one is a perennial that they use as a natural sedative. Valorin has been used as a medicinal herb since ancient Greece. It's not something that's gonna kill somebody, it's just something that's gonna help them sleep. Anise hyssop is also great in the garden. Besides smelling wonderful, 
The plant attracts butterflies. If you smell it, it smells like licorice, black licorice. Orange hyssop has bold color and can be used in cooking. This one has a great pretty orange flower on it, and that one you can also use in some teas. You can grow herbs inside or outside on your deck and in the garden, but the best thing about growing your own herbs is for convenience. The benefit is, is just knowing where you get your herbs. It's, it's something that you can go out to your garden and freshly pick it. For In the Garden, Sonia Goins, 12 News. One more tip, most herbs need at least six hours of direct sunlight in order to grow well. well. Coming up, those boots are made for walking, but they're also made for style. We'll check out some of the finest fashions for the Hamel Rodeo. But first, get ready to reel in those summer walleyes with some tips from Terry Tuma. John Jacobson is next with sports. Well, this is a very big deal for a local golfer. A couple years ago, she was playing for her high school team, yeah. right? Now she's on a very big stage. Playing against some of the top uh, players from around the country and around the world this week. She's already accomplished a lot in her golf career. This week, Maple Grove native Sarah Burnham is getting the chance of a lifetime at the U.S. Women's Open. Jay Wilcox has more. It's not a stretch to say playing in the U.S. Open is a dream come true for Sarah Burnham. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, one of my biggest goals and dreams to make the U.S. Open. and. I'm glad I can say I accomplished that now. Burnham qualified for the Open in mid-May in Minnesota. Her experience as a cold weather golfer sure didn't hurt. It was about 45 degrees with 40 mile hour gust of winds out at Winsong Farms. I don't know if you know the course, but it's not very, there's not many trees, so it's very open, very open. So there wasn't much block in the wind. And so I, I didn't play my best. I mean, I probably could have shot better, but for the conditions, I guess it was pretty good. And I won the qualifier and it got me in the tournament. While it's hard to predict something like this, Burnham's work ethic made this dream a reality. Probably the hardest working student I, I've ever seen. Uh, she's out here practicing in the morning, afternoon, evening, goes home, has some lunch. She's, she's just back here working on it, whether it be on the driving range, the putting green over on the par three course, working on different wedge shots around the green, approach shots. Sarah tied for the state 3A individual title as a high school junior at YZ and was second as a senior and won two team titles. She's just finished a solid freshman season at Michigan State. She's played in some big events like the U.S. Amateur, but acknowledges the nerves will be much worse at the U.S. Open. She set one goal for this week. I would like to make the cut. That would be, I think, a reasonable goal for me. I know it's gonna be a challenge though, but that's one of my goals and dreams too, make a cut at the U.S. Open, so. It's the highlight of Sarah Burnham's career so far with more to come. Jay Wilcox, 12 Sports. Sarah Burnham is still on the course in the first round of the U.S. Open at this taping of 12 News. The postseason of American Legion Baseball isn't far off now. Two local North Hennepin League teams met Wednesday as Westfall Armstrong hosted Osseo. Bottom of the fourth, Armstrong draws even on a two-out hit by Noah Worden that brings home Mitchell Verbaten, and it's 1-1. Bottom of the fifth, Troy Olep. Drops in a hit to score Jay Norgard for a 2-1 Armstrong lead. Let scores in a wild pitch later to make it 3-1. But Osseo rallies in the seventh. Ben Christofferson gets his start with a single that plates Stephen Fisher. Two batters later, Matt Beznicek drives in Tyler Lindman, and Osseo ties it at three. The go-ahead run walks in as Osseo gets four runs in the final inning. And they win the game by a final score of 5-3. to three. Pro angler Terry Tuma has a couple of ideas. I may land you more walleyes this summer. Here's this week's Channel 12 fishing tip. To have success catching summer walleyes, first of all, is mark them on your liquid crystal graph. You know, maybe it's uh, off a point or off a rock pile or a ledge, uh, inside turn of a sidearm coming off a flat. And then when you mark these concentrated schools of walleyes, which is going to be many times the case, the best way to catch these fish is turn your electric trolling motor on and hover over them. Just keep on working them and coaxing them. Live bait rigging is going to be the best way to, uh, to approach this with either leeches or crawlers. Generally speaking, I, I'll use a five to a uh, six foot snell, uh, something in that area of usually eight pound test line, uh, possibly six and dropping down to even four. And then uh, using your uh, standing line, which is line from your uh, reel. And most of the time I'll either use a uh, 
super braid line like fire line or even nanofill depending on the situation and then dropping it over the side of the boat and then you want to use a, a weight just heavy enough only I've got a couple here but use one just heavy enough that's going to run your uh, line at a 45 degree angle alongside the boat. This is extremely important. What this does, first of all, and you do not need to leave very much line out, and the reason being you don't want to do that is, uh, first of all, you're going to maintain contact with the bottom. You're also going to be able to feel a real subtle bite, and then, too, uh, you don't have to reel in for a long distance. This works extremely well, and uh, then along with that, too, is just raise it up off the bottom just a, a somewhat, maybe a couple inches so you're not plowing the bottom. Uh, very easy to feel that real ultralight bite using the correct rod, of course. Be sure to tune in for another tip. Enjoy the time on the water. Thanks, Terry, and that's it for sports. Yeah, thanks, John. Mm -hmm. well, coming up, get on your boots. We head to the Northwest Metro's version of the Wild Wild West for some fashion tips. We'll be right back. From now through Sunday, the Hamill Rodeo is one of the main attractions in the West Metro. Neil Persley shows us where you can update your Western duds in preparation for the show. I'm going to the Hamill Rodeo. That's all about bulls, broncs, and barrels. But before you go, you may be thinking about blue jeans, belts, and boots. I like ones with, like, the pattern on them. And that's exactly what was on the mind of Taya and her brother, Connor Vocati of Maple Grove, which is why I found them at Pleasant Hill Saddle Shop in Rogers. Mine are more for, like, fashion than actual riding and all that fun stuff because they're going to the rodeo. Besides rodeos, another great thing about summer is wearing all the cool stuff you can't wear in the winter. Oh, you can break out all your fun exotic boots and some of the fancier leathers and that type of thing and really enjoy them and show them off. Owner Paul Grosser and his staff can keep you up on all the latest styles and get you properly fitted in your perfect pair of kickers for summertime events. In both men's and women's, we're seeing some of the uh, as well as the traditional uh, toe in a boot, we're seeing a little broader square toe in some of the boots. A lot of overlays uh, in the women's especially, multiple colors and, and textures all put on one boot. Boots are kind of like cars. You can spend as much or as little as you want. There is a little bit of that to that old saying, you get what you pay for a little bit. You can get your boots in a variety of leather skins, hides, and colors, but there's something to be said for the classics. I like these because they have like a nice toe and a basic but like still country pattern on them. Whatever your personal taste. I really like the brown. You'll probably be able to find something to suit your fancy. In Rogers, Neil Persley, 12 News. Now off to the rodeo. Besides being stylish with proper care, a good pair of boots could last you 10 years or more, they say. Cowboy had in denim on this desk tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. That's it for now. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Community Corner is up next.